thank you for coming today. I hope you, if you haven't voted already, I hope you certainly intend to. So, with that, I will introduce our speaker for today, Brother Paul Vincent Niebauer. He's been a Benedictine monk here at St. John's Abbey for 21 years. He grew up in Phillips, Wisconsin, and I'm not sure <laughs> it's it. Thank you. He completed his bachelor's degree in theater and secondary education from the University of Wisconsin at Madison in 1976. And then he went on for his master's in directing from the Chicago School of Performing Arts at Roosevelt University in 2002. All right, now it gets interesting. He worked as a <laughs> ringmaster and a perform performance director for a number of circuses throughout North America for 13 years. I didn't know there were a number of circuses. <laughs> but. And then directly from the circus, he came to St. John's Abbey. <laughs> <laughs> for 13 years, he taught and directed St. John's, up at St. John's Prep School. And then for five years, he served as full-time vocations director for the Abbey, and then went back to the St. John's Prep, where he directs theater again. Um, in 1997, he established a circus camp up at uh, St. John's Prep. So in the summertime, if you've seen a bunch of clowns walking around, <laughs> those truly are clowns. They're not coworkers, politicians, anything else. They are clowns. Monks. Monks, yes. <laughs> Um, he's also directed for the St. Cloud Civic Theater and the Col and CSBSJU uh, University Opera Workshop. His greatest joy is working with the St. John's Prep School students because he's constantly amazed and inspired by the talent and creativity of our young people, and he's very blessed to be working here as we all are. Okay, so a few years ago I asked him, how do you go from being a ringmaster in a circus to a monk in a monastery? And you told me that he said, oh, you'd be surprised that there are very many similarities. <laughs> so I think that might be another topic for a future sure. lunch and learn. Sure. <laughs> um, okay, and I thought with all your performance in theater and circus, you would be making your entrance in an, an elephant, but... Wait for it, wait for it. Oh, the show's not, okay. But unless I'm missing the proverbial elephant in the room, the elephant must be in the shop for repairs. <laughs> oh, he wants this back. So, um, anyway. The show must go on, so would you please join me in welcoming Brother Paul Vincent. Thank you, Chick. Um, wow, I've never uh, presented before so many people that I know. This is great. This is great. Um, just a, a little word from one of my sponsors. Don't forget uh, Oliver, uh, the, bro uh, the Broadway music version of Oliver to be opening at uh, the Paramount in March, around March 20th. St. John's Prep combines uh, talent with St. John's Boys Choir Concert Choir. Uh, it will be the largest production St. John's Prep has ever, yeah. We're talking 70 on stage, not including the orchestra. Yeah, we'll see if there's life after death, right? Yeah. <clears throat> okay, welcome, 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 welcome. This is uh, really part of the journey that you are going to be enjoying right now. Uh, it's a huge topic already, and the puppets haven't really even stepped on stage. So uh, I'm going to break this into really five parts. First, the story of how these rather amazing puppets arrived at St. John's. A uh, brief synopsis of the story of them all in The Night Visitors, because not a lot of people know it. It's a very short story. Uh, the pictures of the puppets themselves, so you will be seeing at least two-dimensional images of the puppets, a guest appearance, and of course, hopefully time for question and answer. Um, 
I've always been attracted by the Benedictine entrepreneurial spirit in general, and particularly here at St. John's. I thought, this place is created for me. These are my people. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know what I'm talking about. Minnesota Public Radio, the quad being the largest building built uh, west of the Mississippi when it was built for educational purposes. Uh, the St. John's Bible, Hill Museum Manuscript Library, our School of Theology being the first school of theology to offer uh, the MDiv to women. We dare. <laughs> we dare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. I like that. You see why the circus to the monastery? Yeah, not any monastery, this one, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so it was no surprise that when Liz Bussey, now you gotta know this, this is great, there's Miss Elizabeth. Liz Bussey and I grew up together. My dad was a doctor, uh, he delivered me because the doctor wasn't there and I was arriving, so mom said, you're not going anywhere, you're gonna grab this kid. I'm number three of three. He also delivered Miss Elizabeth. Uh, we're the same age. We went to kindergarten together, and uh, we did our first puppet show in kindergarten. We did Lady and the Tramp. I had a tramp puppet. I think it was an ab uh, abridged version, because that's the only puppet we had. But <laughs> <laughs> And actually, that picture is, is great, because I, I pulled it off uh, the internet. That's, she was doing Liz's circus story because we eventually were on the circus together for a number of years. And so she's, uh, she's an equity actress, a playwright, professional playwright, and that really is a puppet on her left, your right. She's, it's called Liz's Circus Story. It was produced by Kentucky uh, Public Television. Uh, she's an amazing woman. She's married to a federal prosecutor which is probably helpful for a circus person or a theater person um, in, in Kentucky. So, yeah, there will be humor in this, yes. Yeah. So Liz calls me up and says, let's go, of course she knows I'm a monk at St. John's, and she says, let's, let's do a road trip. Let's catch up, let's meet some of the circus. I left the circus in 1970, excuse me, 1989, um, and uh, a lot of my friends still exist, and of course, uh, they're common friends. And so let's go on a road trip, and so some of my best friends, that's Oka, Kosti, and Megu, three of my most favorite friends in the world. Uh, Oka was six years old when Elizabeth and I started working with her in 1974. She was about this tall, you could put your hand straight out like so. Um, she's a marvelous uh, African, excuse me, uh, Indian elephant, Asian. Um, and then Kosti and Megu following up top, and that's Oka on the left down below with uh, Kosti in the center and Megu, you know, on the, your, your right. Okay, so uh, it was good to see them. We brought them each a watermelon, <laughs> which they step on very gently just to crack it, and then they pick up the pieces and eat the whole thing. See, now you know. <laughs> the Amal puppets were built, constructed, conceived and constructed by John and Lindy Wright. That is John on the right. Um, yes, much older than Lindy. In fact, he passed away in 1991. Lindy is still alive. Uh, they founded, at, um, not quite sure, possibly they founded together the Little Angel Puppet Theater in London, which actually still exists today. Uh, the little fellow there is Joe Wright, who is now a film director. Um, he has directed The Cellist, Anna Karenina, Pride and Prejudice, among other, yeah, among other movies. The story's incredible. It's, I'm not making this up, okay? <laughs> yeah. Um, so that, that's John on the right. Uh, both John and Lindy, John receiving the um, Order of the British Empire, most excellent order of the British Empire. Uh, Huge, I mean, if you, I think there are five levels, the, the top level, top two levels are to be knighted. So Sir John, Lady Lindy, they received the first level of that um, for their contribution to the art of puppetry. Um, they were commissioned to build the Amal puppets for the opening of Queen Elizabeth Hall in March of 1997. Um, here's, isn't that a great picture of Lindy? Is she not a puppet? mistress, I mean, 
who else, how would they look otherwise? And that's, of course, her, her daughter with her, um, who also works. There's the Little Angel Puppet Theater. It is small. It actually was a temperance hall, had no roof when John spent 74 pounds on it when he bought it back in 1961 and turned it into the Little Angel Puppet Theater. Still exists today. Puppet shows and repertory, um, that's what they do. It's a professional puppet theater. Um, so John died in 1991, and though the Little Angel Puppet Theater was doing well and Lindy was still working, she had decided that the Amal puppets were taking up too much room in her modest cottage next to the puppet theater, and she was looking for a home for them. How did we know this? Liz went over, my friend Liz Bussey went over to London because she'd written a play that actually was produced on the West End. Not fully produced, but more than a reader's theater, and so she went over, of course, to see it and called all of her friends together because when she was a junior in college, she worked at the Little Angel Puppet Theater mopping the floor just so that she could get close to John and Lindy Wright. She knew about them. Miss Elizabeth and I, yes, we d had done puppets in kindergarten, but on the circus, we also did puppet shows, puppets uh, in the sideshow for a number of years. So we did over 500 puppet shows, uh, yeah, on the road. And so, um, yeah, so she knew, Liz knew about the Amal puppets because they were built for Queen Elizabeth Hall which, I, this might be, yeah, a large facility, about the size in seating capacity of Escher Auditorium. Now you saw the Little Angel Puppet Theater. Okay, little difference in size there. So um, the Little Angel Puppet Theater, these, these puppets were very large, so once the show had closed, what to, what to do with them? Lindy living in a cottage alongside small space, uh, what to do with the puppets. And so Liz, on this road trip that we're taking, visiting elephants and circus people, says, I have a friend in London who has uh, these marvelous puppets, and she wants a home for them. She doesn't really want to split them up. She doesn't want to sell them on eBay. Would you be interested in them? Liz, tell me more about the puppets. What do they look like? She had a couple of black and white pictures, and I thought, oh, man. Um, really? So uh, I went back. We had just sold some of our equipment, circus camp, so I had a little account sitting over there. And uh, I called Lindy Wright, and we talked. And that was right at the beginning of the economic downturn. DHL, International Shipping Company, which you may be aware of, would handle, if we did this, the shipping. We could possibly have these puppets uh, on permanent loan if we simply paid for the shipping. Lindy wanted them to have a good home and a home where hopefully eventually they would perform again. So I called DHL, they're very polite. Everything's metric. <laughs> <laughs> and okay, so I called Lindy, okay, date, time, DHL goes, and I think, you know what, I'll just do Amal and his mom and the Three Kings. Those are the principles. We'll talk about the show in a moment. I can do the show without the other 18 puppets. Okay, so we'll just try this. And if they're in a disastrous shape or they're not what might be workable, okay, you take your loss. So DHL arrives at Lindy's cottage and she says, here they are, and they look at her like, we're not boxing these up. You need to start over. Okay, <laughs> so they went away, talked to Lindy, and I thought, this really, this maybe isn't just such a good idea. Every time I called DHL, it was a different quote. They were very nice, but it was a different quote for the shipping. <laughs> I thought, so I don't really know how much this is gonna cost, maybe less, maybe more, whatever. Um, and then I find out Little Angel Puppet Theater produces a show in repertory, whoops, of Benedict and Scholastica, the story of Benedict and Scholastica. Okay, I get it, I get it. So, so uh, we get it figured out, and um, sorry, uh, yeah, we get it figured out, and uh, 
we'll take a little side trip right now. Um, hold that. Uh, Giancarlo Minotti wrote A Mall in the Night Visitors for uh, uh, a live broadcast from Rockefeller Center in 1951, television broadcast. It was written for television. It's 55 minutes long. He was up against the wall of It's an Opera, up against the wall as to what am I going to write about? I tick, tick, tick. I've got a deadline, they're going to pay me, I need the money, but I don't know what I'm going to write. He was walking through the Metropolitan Museum in New York and he came upon Hieronymus's, uh, Hieronymus Bosch's painting of the Adoration of the Magi. He grew up in England. He's not a Santa Claus character. He's an epiphany child. The three kings bring the gifts. And so that was the birth of the the opera, A Mall in the Night Visitors. Let me read uh, just a brief synop synopsis for you. We're, in, we're near Bethlehem. It's the first century just after the birth of Christ. A mall, a disabled boy who can walk only with a crutch, has a problem telling tales. He is sitting outside playing a shepherd's pipe when his mother calls for him. After much persuasion, she enters the house, but his mother does not believe him when he tells her there's an amazing star as big as a window outside over the roof. Later that night, Amal's mother weeps, praying that Amal not become a beggar. After bedtime, there's a knock at the door, and the mother tells him all to go see who it is. He's amazed when he sees three splendidly dressed kings, the Magi, one of whom is black. At first, the mother does not believe them all, but when she goes to the door to see for herself, she is stunned. The three kings tell the mother and them all they're on a long journey to give gifts to a wondrous child, and they would like to rest at their house, to which the mother agrees, saying that all she can offer is, quote, a cold fireplace and a bed of straw, close quote. The mother goes to fetch firewood, and Amal seizes the opportunity to speak with the kings. King Balthazar answers Amal's questions about his life as a king and asks, what Amal does. Amal responds that he was once a shepherd, but his mother had to sell the sheep. Now he and his mother will have to go begging. Amal then talks with King Caspar, who is childlike, eccentric, and a bit deaf. Caspar shows Amal his box of magic stones, beads, and licorice, and offers Amal some of the candy. The mother returns. Amal is told to go fetch the neighbors so the kings may be fed and entertained properly. After the neighbors have left and the kings are resting, the mother attempts to steal for her son some of the king gold that was meant for the Christ child. She's thwarted by the king's page. When Amal wakes to find the page grabbing his mother, he attacks him. Seeing Amal's weak defense of his mother and understanding the motives for the attempted theft, King Melchior says she may keep the gold as the holy child will not need earthly power or wealth to build his kingdom. The mother says she has waited all her life for such a king and asks the kings to take back the gold. She wishes to send a gift but has nothing to send. Amal too has nothing to give the child except his crutch. When he offers it to the kings, his leg is miraculously healed. With permission from his mother, he leaves with the kings to see the child and give his crutch in thanks for being healed. You can dab your eyes now if you like, <laughs> okay? So, yeah, okay, great. Great. Um, could we turn on these lights, these lights right up here, just for a moment? Yeah, if you know which ones they are, that's fine. So would you like to meet them all, would you? Yeah, yeah of course you would. Yeah. Actually, you're going to meet his mother first. Okay, so yeah, yeah, and Patty, yeah. Aren't they willing? Yeah, okay, so you're gonna actually, you hold this, mm -hmm. and you're gonna take, nope, you're gonna come on the other side, Patty, mm -hmm. and you're gonna take that. Whoops, sorry. <laughs> you need to do this. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong puppet, wrong oh, puppet. <laughs> but it would sure make life easier, <laughs> wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is Amal, obviously, Amal's mother, okay? Um, 
When Lindy knew the puppets were coming over, she actually, of all the puppets, Amal's mother's face is a new face. It's leather, actually, and if you like, after the presentation, you can check it out. Um, she made one for her son, one for her daughter, kept the original, and the other new one is here before you. Yeah, so. Puppeteers and their puppets. Okay, Edgar Bergen, Charlie McCarthy. Charlie had a place at table and always ate with the family, had his own bedroom. Sometimes these are in my room in the monastery or in, in the office. They were waiting here. Brother Benedict jumped higher than I've ever seen him jump. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we would call these a rod puppet, not high tech. A rod. There. So rod puppet. Marionettes being suspended by strings. Hand puppet goes over your hand. Yep. So it's a, it's a, little, um, it's a little different because a rod puppet sometimes is totally operated like so, but they have, why don't you turn around, there's just a handle right on the back of her head and a handle on, the, on her uh, torso, on, the, on her back there. And here's the star of the show. Coming mother. <laughs> Thank you, Chick. Yeah, yeah. Um, they're brilliant. I mean, they're brilliant. So this was, Amal was the first case I opened, and this wonderful young man came out, and I thought, yeah, I think we need to get the rest of the puppets. And so they came in 11 cases, about the size of caskets. <laughs> It's okay, physical plant is used to my packages. <laughs> it's big, it's bizarre, call Brother Paul Vincent. You know. and, uh, uh, and I think we got a really amazing deal from DHL. I don't think they charge us anywhere near what, what it would have cost. But, uh, and then I had a sabbatical, sabbatical a couple years ago. There was some work that needed to be done. Um, it, we're planning on doing a performance in 2017, uh, and that will be 50 years for these puppets. So they're not, they're not youngsters, yeah, yeah. Amal's head is wooden. Can you lift your chin up? Yep. <laughs> and so it's actually hollow. Uh, the mother, as I said, is, is um, leather, yeah. The hands of all the principles are, are wooden, and then of course you, your manipulation works like so. Yeah. Okay. It's a lot of people out there, huh? Yeah. Amal and his mother are the only two puppets that don't have eyes. They have the sockets. Um, John Wright is no longer with us. A couple of years when I get up there, I'll ask him. But I think, I suspect, at least part of the reason is they're poor. So you have the emptiness of the eye of the poor. But also, you know, when you listen to a radio play or you listen to a storyteller, you create in your imagination what their eyes would look like can be much more expressive than anything three-dimensional can do. So I suspect maybe a combination of those two. Is that right? Sure. Okay, all right, all right. We're gonna show a few more slides and then a little time for Q&A. <laughs> yeah. You were splendid. Thank you, thank you. You're hired. <laughs> Queen Elizabeth Hall, there is, yeah, let's hit those lights. Um, this is Balthazar. On, the, on your right is uh, one of our novices. 
um, Aidan Putnam. Balthazar is taller than David Pauling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was in pretty rough shape, so he has a new crown. Um, the faces are really untouched. Some of the village people, you'll see them, but uh, villagers, but um, I, it could have been a little bit of work on some of them, but other than that, I didn't want to touch the paint at all. Uh, 20 feet from the audience theater lights, they'll never know, and I really didn't want to touch that at all, okay? And come in after, if you want to see these faces up close, uh, it's, it's worth it. There's Melchior. Oh, I think he needs to take some depression medicine, but... <laughs> But you know, that kingship is, that's rough on the psyche, you know. <laughs> and here's King Caspar. Now, in the distance, what? So, the show is staged in such a sense that upstage, the backstage, all the kings, and he's riding on his horse, the other two kings are riding on camels, which operate, by the way, but they're much smaller, so they're in the distance, you see. And so they'll come across from stage right to stage left, go off stage, and then when they come back on stage, they're full size. And so here is, here is Caspar full size, yeah. He's the deaf one. He's the, he has his little box in front where he has his uh, jewels and precious things and licorice, yeah. <laughs> And he also has a pet parrot that bites his nose. <laughs> this is their tiring house. We have two huge cases like this. When they arrived at, uh, I didn't. Uh, I built the interiors, so just the shell. When they arrived at the uh, at physical plant, we had to get a uh, forklift to get them off the truck. I didn't. I my sense of size isn't always accurate. <laughs> it was in meters anyway. Remember? Yeah. <laughs> And uh, here are some prep theater students uh, showing you the villagers, which, and uh, actually the page on your left there, second from the end there. He's the page who discovers Amal, his mother, taking the gold. Aren't they marvelous? Yeah. And one well-fed <laughs> villager, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Lee Dillard, I don't know if she's still here, she was here at the beginning, but Lee Dillard, Brother Paul David Lang, in addition to other college faculty staff, students from CSBSJU, St. John's Prep, possibly a member of St. John's Boys Choir, of course, to sing the part of Amal, will be presenting Giancarlo Minotti's Amal and the Night Visitors with the Amal Puppets on the 50th anniversary of their creation in January of 2017 on one of the campuses. We have not selected the venue as yet. So I think, you know, Benedict in telling the Christmas story, preserving history, working together to create something beautiful to share with others so that in all things God may be glorified. Yeah, there we go. Thank you. So this is great. We have a, a few minutes for questions, if you like. Um, you notice I didn't show you the kings. I just showed you pictures of it. We want you to come to the performance. <laughs> you know, give them their money's worth, but leave them wanting more. <laughs> yeah. Yes, so I'm Pat. To, I'm very familiar with Malian Wizards, not so familiar with puppetry. But what these kind of broad puppets are the, the people are operating the are the, are the, no, the singers are not, is that what you're saying? No, the people who operating. are operating the puppets. Correct. Are they? Are they seen? Or did you see oh, them? yes. Great question. Yep. Yep. So they would be dressed in something neutral. Okay. Uh, maybe black. Depends upon the set design. Maybe a dark, you know, blue. Um, uh, their faces would not be covered. And they will disappear if they're doing their job. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. If they're doing their job, the puppeteers will disappear. This is not unlike Boon Raku, Japanese puppet theater, where the puppet master is seen and then he has a couple of assistants that in another 30 years they might be seen. Uh, but yeah, so the, the puppet master. And that, of course, Lee Dillard being involved in this is 
the movement of body. So we're planning on building rehearsal puppets. And then, of course, then there's the added thrill of them being able to work with the actual Amal puppets when the, when the time comes. And uh, so that's 2017. Why? Just a lot of preparation to do our very best. Yep. Thank you for that. I didn't explain that. Yes? Does it take two puppeteers for each of the main characters? It takes two puppeteers for each of the principals or main characters, right. So each king, two, and the kings are actually pretty heavy. Um, Amal, his mother, and so it is that dynamic of not just the puppeteer and the puppet, but the two puppeteers working together and the puppet. <sighs> They better get along, <laughs> or at least agree to get along. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, so it's, it's a lot going on. And then, of course, you have the chorus, singing, orchestra. Mm -hmm. Question over here. Yes? Um, in addition to the entertainment application and value, do you, has there been or do you foresee application in like, theological education using this puppet in the stories? A, a, the last part of what you said, an application of? Absolutely. It's a perfect story. Actually, I missed this little part. It's a perfect story uh, for us, I think. Um, it is the story, of, well, the Magi, the gifts. So it is an extended story of the birth of Christ. Um, it's not told very much, not, at least in this country. It's 55 minutes long, so it's not two and a half hours. Um, it's told in puppets. Whoa, that's taking it in a different direction. Yeah. So the appeal, I would think, would be just really wide, very wide. Yeah. Does Amal's mother need some kind of night cream or something in her face? Soft? No. <laughs> we talked about that, and she said she was just fine. <laughs> I mean, I don't think she hears me. She just had a facelift, so it's okay. she's good for another fifty. Yeah. Where exactly in London is the little is the little angel uh, pu uh, puppet theater? Um, Islington, is it? Yeah, Islington. Mm -hmm. Actually, and excuse me. And the, the um, packages, the big boxes, came from, or the address was Spittlefields. And, and I was, Spittlefields? <laughs> so thank you, internet. So I looked up Spittlefields. Well, it was once upon a time, Hospital Fields. Over the years, yeah, Spittlefields, yep. Oh, you mean hospital fields, that's what I said, Spittlefields. You learn a lot when you do this, you, you really, really do. So other than you and Lee, who you mentioned, the cast members, are, are those cast members going to be the puppet operators? Are they doing the voice, they're doing the singing, or? It's an opera, right, so, so it's almost all right, singing. Right, so right, that, so would a, that would be a that would be a Pat voice. Kent. That would be a Carolyn Finley department. Okay. The orchestra would be orchestra. The operators could be prep students but or dancers. David Paul is crazy enough to go on this journey with me, yes, and guess. Lee Dillard fell in love with them. Is Lee here? Oh, you are still here. Oh, God bless you. Yeah. So when. You know, David and I said, we're, we're going to pitch this. Let's pitch this to Lee. And so she came over. <laughs> we're going to show you the puppets, right? So we go over to prep. And I've, you know, presentation is everything. So, and we just had this huge case, because we have two of those cases, yeah. And it just opened. They opened like a, uh, uh, like a um, steamer trunk, yeah. And opened them like that. And I thought, well, I think we got her. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, amen. so, yeah, amen, she just said amen, yeah, yeah, so, any other questions, 
You've been a wonderful audience, wonderful. Yeah, do take time if you like to come back and visit Amal and his mom. Yeah, it's good for them to be socialized after all these, you know, <laughs> years. Yep, yep. And thank you so much again. Peace.